Yeah, I was pleased uh, pleased today with the way the team started quickly, and you know, I like to attribute it to our fans. I mean, I, I, I got to give our fans a, a, a big thanks for getting out there early and just really inspiring our team. You know, it felt good to, to see that student section packed, and you know, our, I know our guys really enjoy. Uh, when they come out and they see that lower bowl feel the way it is, and we hope we continue to be able to create that type of advantage uh, when we play at home. Uh, we were fortunately able to start quickly. You know, we got a good three and out on defense, and then offensively, uh, we were able to go down and score quick. And we keep stressing that starting fast is really important for us uh, in all three phases, you know, for us to get a good start and then also finish faster. And today I thought we did that. Um, I um, was happy with the offensive execution early in the game. Uh, as we got to the third quarter, you know, we kind of got a little low because we slowed down the tempo. We were trying to cut some of the plays off the uh, game that our defense would have to play. And that's not something that we're good at yet. And so it was good to be able to work on slowing our tempo down because we've got to, again, make sure that we play complementary football. And, you know, they got maybe 70 to 80 plays themselves today. So, you know, that's a lot of plays. And we need to be able to slow the tempo, to control the tempo of the game on the offensive side of the ball. And I thought the execution got a little sloppy in the third quarter, but was happy uh, to see us win the fourth quarter. And, you know, when you have a running, a running back room, like we have. It's just great to be able to finish games with guys like Tayon Fleet Davis and, J and Jake Funk and those guys that were able to come in and, and finish the game and win the fourth quarter. Um, third down was good for us on the offensive side of the ball. It's really important. You know, we keep talking about football IQ and situational football, and I think our guys are starting to get it. We were eight for eight for touchdowns in the red zone, 11 for 15 in uh, third down situations, and, and those are good, good things, and that's how we want to play. Obviously, you know, we got the 24-hour rule in effect. These guys can enjoy it. What a great opportunity to play a ranked team here at home and to come out with a win like we did today. I'm really proud of our guys. And, and you know, we, we, we ride them really hard during the course of the week. And we, we strive for excellence in our execution. And the thing we ask is for each guy to give us the best version of themselves every time they come out. And that collectively gives our team the best chance to be successful. Uh, so with that, I'll open it up to questions. I would refer Jack Litch Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now. Don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Uh, Mike, uh, with the offense scoring the way it did, how much of the key was the defense, especially the two early turnovers and the way they played, even late, the stopping on fourth down and playing with that shot? Well, man, our defense did a, a really good job. You know, we gave up some explosive plays, which you don't like to see, but when you play the type of defense we play, uh, you're going to give up some plays, and it's just how you respond. You know, the most disappointing thing with the plays we gave up were some of the deep balls. We had guys in position, and I just feel like I've got to do a better job of getting us the work they need, our corners need, to play the deep ball when it's in the air because we were in great position on Tino's and he had bad eyes and then lost contact with the guy and then we had to pass interference a couple of times. So we've got to do some things in practice to make sure that our guys are put in those positions to make the play. Um, but it was great. Our defense gave us two early you know, stops and then a turnover, which allowed us to, again, put points on the board. And we're a team that kind of feeds off of that energy. So and then to finish the game the way our defense finished it in the fourth quarter, it was good to see. Yeah, so, you know, Shaq, well, he was a game time decision. He actually practiced some on Wednesday, and we got him in there on Thursday. And then, you know, yesterday we rested him, and we took him out to warm him up, and he just couldn't go, and we didn't want to put him in harm's way. So, uh, fortunately, we were able to rest him. Keandre had a big time game for us, and took up the slack. Bryce Brand came in and filled in, along with getting McCullough back. That's helped us some with our depth there. But, again, I think, you know, this week of rest, will, benefit us with getting Shaq back in time for uh, Temple because he went out and warmed up. We just couldn't get him to go. 
on the offensive side, especially in the first half, what, what do you think game plan wise enabled you to do what you did against that defense and that defensive front? You know, our, our execution, um, Emily, I, I know that sounds like coach speak, but we, we run a style of offense that, that the defense can't be right unless they out execute us. You know, the RPO stuff that we do, when you start running the football, with the way we have the capabilities to run it with our running backs and the way we block it up front, the only way you can stop it is adding the extra guy in the box. And that's where you saw early in the game some of the, the RPO concepts where Daryl Jones had a big catch and run and uh, Demas had a few and our tight ends. And so it's hard to be right. And the only time that you usually have the ability to stop it is if our execution breaks down. And that's why I keep stressing it's really important for us to execute our system. And it's more about us than it is about them. Darrell Kinsey Jr., WBGR coach. The offense has been explosive both in the rushing and the passing game. But how does a quarterback with the abilities of Josh Jackson help the running? Is he helped by the running game? Does that help him to open up the field a little bit more? Yeah, I think, again, having the type of runners we have with Anthony McFarland and the attention that he draws and, you know, Javon Leak and the, the attention that those guys draw, they're going to bring guys up to have to stop the run. And so, Again, with the complementary things that we do off the run pass option stuff, it's uh, you know they have to pick their poison because then you saw later in the game they started not bringing a safety down and playing coverage, and that's when Anthony hit a really tight inside zone for a touchdown and Javon popped one for a big long run. And so we've got to do a good job of making sure that we self-scout ourselves and just window dress what we do. But again, the execution part is what helps the quarterback, and I think what you saw today out of Josh was his, deci his decision making in the RPO game because you know we're asking him to make decisions after the ball was snapped and and that's why and that's why we picked him as our starter because he makes good decisions. Coach, to follow up on that, uh, last week obviously Josh played well as, as well, and the one criticism you have is that you'd like to see him play a little bit faster, make a little faster decisions. It seemed like he was doing that today, getting the ball out quicker. Uh, it, do you feel that way? Do you feel like you made progress in that area? And how much do you think that helped you know, protect him against dangerous uh, Syracuse pass runs? Yeah, I do, I do feel like he sped things up. But I think him speeding it up is a byproduct of him having a, just being a little more comfortable in how we call the games. And I thought Scotty did a great job offensively mixing it up. And we did a great job with some of the personnel groupings that we added in and put on tape that uh, I was really happy with the way he called the game. And to me, I think Josh just has a little more comfort now, having played in the game and have a good understanding of what we're asking him to do. And that usually allows you to play faster. No, no injury to Johnny Jordan. No. Coach, last week you said the best way to assess how well a team is progressing is what they do from week one to week two. Having played two important games, having had two big blowout wins, how would you assess this team going forward and what are you looking to improve the most going into next week against Temple? Well, I think you see the biggest jump between game two and game three. Uh, we'll keep adding, <laughs> we'll keep adding to it so, so you can't pin me down. But no, you know, I, I thought our execution was better uh, this week. Uh, you know, the one that sits in my cross, the interception, was a poor decision. And I, uh, I'm a negative Nelly when it comes to like bad football plays, and that was a bad play for us. Um, you know, we had more penalties than I would like, you know, offsides on the kickoff just to start the game. Those are the things that make me, uh, just kind of makes my skin crawl when we get these, these dumb penalties. And it was, for us to be the team we need to be, we got to play with great discipline. You know, discipline and winning go hand in hand. And as we like to say, it gets you when it gets you. You know, those things will come back to haunt us if we don't get it cleaned up. So those are the things we'll focus on this week. Uh, I guess I got 24 hours to kind of enjoy it and then tomorrow we got a, a tough day because we're going to play a team on the road that beat us here at home that has been a tough game for us over the years and you know it'll be our first road test. Are you, right, Are you you know high praise for you know Dino Babers earlier this week and you know the type of offense he runs and things like that you know for you as a coach how much do you look up to him and you know what does it mean for you to be able to uh, kind of out coach him in a game like this? I don't know about out coaching. I mean, comparisons are the kiss of death, so you won't get me into comparing out coaching anybody. I think our players went out and played, and played to the played in the way that we want them to play. Um, Dino's still a great coach. Still got the utmost respect for him and the program that he's made. You look at what he's done. He's won ten games, and 
has gotten that program heading in the right direction. Um, you know, uh, all I can say is uh, I'm glad we were able to get the win, and our team is responsible. So, you know, it's about our team and our execution, and not necessarily about them. Coach, was the rotation where you had Ellis McKinney play three or four offensive line positions, you got Piggy in, got all your receivers in, Sammy O playing on the defensive line. Is all of that scripted out, or is that made up as the game dictates the situation? Always just throw it up on a wall to hope it's stick, man. Just call it. Just, <laughs> I'm not believing that. You go out there, you go out there. Okay? No, of course we're scripted. It's organized. we got things that we want to get accomplished in, in how we game plan. Um, again, I learned from Ralph Freed and that you put your best players on the field and you know we've got opportunities that we had all three of our tailbacks on the field in different formations. We've got some good tight ends and I know people here love the tight end and we've had some, some good packages with, the, with both Chig and Mabry on the field and you know up front again we're developing depth and so Ellis is a guy like I told you he's like a Swiss army knife and, and that he does so many things that he's like a, a sick starter. I mean, he pretty much starts for us and it keeps us being able to keep fresh players on the field up front because we don't have a lot of depth that we don't want to take uh, or have our guys the way we play. I mean, we had 83 plays again today. We've got to be careful because it, it's, it compounds with the more games you play and the more plays you have. So you're going to see us try to develop the depth of our team by playing a lot of players and, and using, utilizing the personnel we have. Mike, Mike uh, eight yards a, a play last week. You were right there up until the two kneel downs at the end. How impressive is it to you to be able to maintain that offensive efficiency week over week? Man, you guys are just trying to set me up with all these questions like this. And this is not. It is not impressive. I mean, we've got. It's execution. I mean, our guys. They, they're starting to get what we're asking them to do. You know, uh, our goal is to score one more point than our opponent. That's still the. the and then we, we make it more about us than we do our opponents. So as long as our players keep that mindset, you know, we play the next play and we really don't even look up until the end. And that's what we've got to maintain, that type of, uh, that type of habits and behaviors. Mike, how tough is it for a coach to, to get their team back focused after a big win like this? I know last year, obviously you weren't here, but after beating Texas, they had, they had a hard time against Temple uh, after Bowie. Yeah, I just left three years of getting focused. It's pretty easy to do with how you do it on Sunday, and it starts with us. And, you know, I don't think you'll see us you know, running around high-fiving and celebrating this win other than for the next 24 hours, and then it goes back to re recharging, resetting to neutral, and then you start the process of how we prepare for our opponent. And again, it starts with us, not the team we're going to play. Now, I do know our team knows the, you know, it's been a tough game. I've been around here for 10 years, and we played Temple quite a bit. And they've been dog fights. And, you know, our, our expectation is that we're going to get their best and that it'll be a tough, hard nosed game. It is really hard to win on the road. And so we've got to prepare our guys to, to, to go up on the road. It'll be the first time we've traveled together, which is new. And uh, so this week, I mean, we'll celebrate it tonight, but come tomorrow. Uh, as a coaching staff, we'll start game planning, and our guys have Sunday off, and then on Monday, it's right back to the drawing board. We start all over again. Your last second, Coach, Shane Hector, WBGR Sports. Um, what has been your biggest challenge um, ch um, coaching this football team since you uh, took over? Because you had two blowout wins, and you only gave up 20 points in two games. So what has been your biggest challenge, and how did you respond to it? I mean, I think the biggest challenge for us is just uh, once you set an expectation and a standard, just living up to it every day. Um, it was challenging this week. I was disappointed on Wednesday with how we kind of didn't finish practice the way we like to. And there's all types of things that we've got to continue to work to improve. And so to me, once we've kind of set this standard as a team and, and, and the expectation starts with our expectation, living up to it is tough. And so driving these guys and driving it home for them to understand that you have to bring it every day and, you know, why wouldn't you give 100% effort when it's 100% your, your choice to give it? And that's the standard that we've set for our guys, and that's what we keep driving home. But, you know, it's hard to do with 18 to 22-year-old males, man. It is hard to get them to understand it. it every day you got to come to work with the right mindset and maximize it every single day. So that's been – that's the toughest challenge for us. But guess what? We drew the line in the sand, and we ain't backing off of it as a staff. We're going to get it out of them. I, I know you have the uh, – right here. 
Um, I know you have the 24 hour rule and you're gonna move on to the next game, but when you look at the grand scheme of rebuilding a program, do, does a win like this over a ranked opponent, is that an important step or do you even take that step back and look at it that way? No, I mean, I don't think the rankings really have anything to do with it. I think the winning is what's important and how we win and, and understanding why we won, have won the way we've won the last couple of weeks. And that's, I mean, that's what we continue to drive on. And so, I mean, we're laying the foundation. I promise you, we're not even close to being the type of team that I know I want us to be. And I know our team isn't satisfied with the type of team we are. We, we are this is a foundation year for us. We are trying to develop and create a culture where this becomes the norm. But right now, it ain't. I mean, we're, we won two games. And that doesn't, I mean, it's great that we won the two. But we got a lot of football left to be played. And again, there's some things that we'll always learn from it because it's the game within the game that we continue to stress with our guys. And, you know, winning takes care of itself when you have the right kind of habits and behaviors. And I'm going to keep driving that home into, with you guys as well. Take two more so we get our players in here. You know, with the defense giving up 330, you know, receiving yards today, what do you want to see specifically improved, you know, on pass coverage? I mean, just uh, like I said, we got to play around a little better. Uh, we were in great position. Uh, I thought Tino was in good position on the deep ball that he got caught on him, and I thought on the pass interference we kind of, uh, you know, panicked with the ball in there. So, again, I've got to do some things in our practice schedule to make sure that the things we don't do well in games, that we're getting enough work on the course of the week to make corrections. And that's the part that, you know, our guys have been really good with taking those corrections. I mean, you're going to give up yards when you play the way we play on defense, but we had a bunch of negative plays. We created two turnovers. We played really good on third down, I think, for the most part. And, you know, I thought our tackling was still above board. You know, there were a couple times where we, you know, kind of dove off the diving board and missed a couple tackles. But, you know, the only part, and again, this was the thing we needed to get corrected, was, you know, we blew a deep coverage earlier in the game where the communication, we weren't on the same page, and that's the part that we've got to get corrected because it'll come back to hurt us when we get ourselves into some close games. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Russell Davis. How you doing, Russell? 1984. Um, I've been doing this a long time, almost 40 years. And one of the things that I've seen last two games is discipline. You know, anywhere from eight to nine plays, your team is disciplined. I've never seen that in a first-year coach. Can you explain to us how you and your coaching staff have gone about getting the kids to be as disciplined and they have been. I know you're critical as a coach. You want every play to be perfect, but I've never seen a first-year coach do what you're doing when it comes to discipline. Well, I think, again, I keep equating everything back to raising kids, man. I think once you draw the line in the sand as a parent that this is how we're going to do it, you don't back off the line um, Monday through Saturday from how we dress when we go on the road and how we act in the dining hall and how we act when we go to class. And, those are the little things that make the big difference. You know, when they come in the building, they take their hats off and they pull their pants up. So all those little things that we ask them to do outside of the football part is what, and I tell them, I mean, we have, we don't have a lot of rules, but the rules we have, we have because it's, it shows us that you care enough about being a part of this family to do things the right way. We won't back off the line with it. I mean, they will try you. I mean, you've raised 18 to 22 year olds. They're going to try you, man. <laughs> and you just got to push back every time they push. And I've got a bunch of great assistant coaches and people in our program that help reinforce it. Everywhere they go within our program, they hear the same thing, just do things the right way. And I mean, we've been fortunate, but you know, discipline and winning go hand in hand. So we got to create and start with doing the discipline things first and then winning comes. Thank you, guys.